Hi, I'm Mary Mamaliti. If you have a busy schedule like I do, you probably don't have a ton of time to get dinner on the table, but you still want to eat delicious food. Well, today we're making the perfect dish. It's fast, it's tasty, it's pad thai, and it's ready in under an hour. I love the sizzle of butter melting in a pan, the smell of cinnamon while I'm baking. I need to touch food while it's cooking and of course taste it, even if I can't see it very well. To me, cooking should be fun. That's why I've invited chefs from across Canada who feel the same way I do to cook with me virtually. Welcome to Dish with Mary. Chef Stephen Barrett has traveled and cooked in more than 40 countries worldwide, but now calls Halifax home with his wife and two young children. His globe-trotting culinary experiences influenced the creation of his online food blog called Seasoned Plate, where he shares recipes, reviews, and recommendations. Chef Stephen has the unique ability to take internationally celebrated dishes and simplify them into an easy step-by-step -step process so that you can feel like a jet setter from the comfort of your own home. Joining us from Nova Scotia is Chef Stephen Barrett. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Mary. How are you today? I am fantastic because we are going to cook together. I'm so excited to cook with you. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Today, we're making pad thai. And Thai cuisine is one of my favorite food. And for those that don't know at home, what is pad thai? So pad thai, it's an authentic Thai dish uh, from Thailand. It's noodle based. We have some proteins like tofu and shrimp. We have a whole bunch of aromatics that we're going to put into the sauce. And if you mix it all together, it's a favorite takeout food here in North America, but we're going to teach you how to cook it at home today. As always, you can go to our website at ami.ca slash dish dash recipes for today's full recipe. Stephen, we have a whole bunch of ingredients in front of us. So let's begin. Let's start with the noodles and then we can, we can keep working our way through. Awesome. So I've gone ahead and I've got a pot of water on the stove. It's already pre-boiled. Big tip though. People at home, you might have a different pack of noodles. Read the instructions, it'll tell you what to do. I'm gonna pop mine in here for about three minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna pop my noodles into the pot. Noodles are in. Let's talk about the sauce. The sauce is what brings this dish together. We have a whole range of things in front of us. And what I'm gonna do is simply just take my ingredients, put them in a mason jar, give them a shake, and it's good to go. So, we have some brown sugar. We're adding just the measured out brown sugar right into the jars. Yes. Next, we're going to add a tablespoon of hot sauce, a teaspoon of sesame oil. We have some fish sauce. We're gonna add that in. We have maple syrup, a little Canadian twist on a Thai classic. I was gonna say a little Canadiana has to be in here. Next are two ingredients that are really similar. So I have soy sauce and Maggie sauce. Now, Maggi sauce is like soy sauce with a bit more MSG, a little bit more flavor. I'm gonna use both. Yeah, I know, it's so good, <laughs> but I'm a little sensitive to it, so I'm just going straight soy sauce. Putting the lid on. Yep, we can give it a shake. Now we can set our sauce aside until we're ready to use it a little bit later. My noodles are just about done. Best way for me to know if a noodle is done is to try it. This is my favorite part, the taste testing. So mine are a little underdone. You can pull them off a little underdone if you want because we are gonna be recooking these. My noodles are about done. I'm just gonna pull them off, strain them with a colander, hit that with a little bit of cold water and then put mm -hmm. some oil on top of that as well just so that they don't stick. We can put them to the side and get everything else moving. What is the next step? Okay, so now we're gonna get into our tofu. Let's turn on our pot. We're using a non-stick pan, deeper pan, if you're uncomfortable with a pan, a pot does the same thing. A high brim pan, you can do a pot, you could do a wok, because we're gonna be putting a lot of stuff back into this pan, and we're gonna be stirring it. If you have a shallow pan, you're just gonna make a mess, it's gonna create more work after. So let's get that pot on the stove, let's crank it up, put a little bit of oil in there, and while that heats up, we'll start cutting up our tofu. So I'm gonna lay my tofu on my cutting board. We'll do okay. four or five cuts right down through the middle, and they should be about quarter inch. So we want the width of my index finger. Once we have our slices, if okay. we flip them to the side, we can create a couple of piles, cut the piles in half lengthwise. Amazing. 
And then if we twist those 90 degrees, we're going to cut into cubes. Then they should be about the width of your index finger. Okay, we're done. Make sure your pan is hot, and then we're going to go ahead and fry these up. Adding them into this beautifully heated pan. And you should immediately hear that sizzle. And we're just going to continue to move these around a little bit. What we want to do is to create a nice crisp on each side. So they're almost like a French fry. Crispy on the outside, soft in the middle. Nice and crispy. I like crisp. So then while the tofu is now sauteing, getting nice and crispy on the stove, what are we doing next? Let's talk about shrimp. Uh, you can buy them in a range of forms. You can buy them cooked or raw. What we have here today are the shrimp in the shell. Now, an easy way to shuck your shrimp is when I, whenever I'm, I'm cleaning a shrimp, I will go in from the bottom. So if you feel along the bottom, that's where the legs are. So it almost feels a little bit furrier. If you flip your shrimp over and start to peel the shell back from the legs, you should be able to peel it right off and then to remove the tail, I simply squeeze the tail and pull, and the shrimp should come right out. Now, can I just say thank you that we already have these deveined, so all we have to do is just peel, because that is a little labor intensive. And uh, I'm all about making things a little easier and welcoming in the kitchen. Yep, absolutely. I'm a little jealous. You're in Nova Scotia, where seafood is extremely fresh. Correct. Yes, we have an abundance of wonderful seafood on the East Coast. Uh, lots of lobster, lots of crab, haddock. Although I am, a, there are some wonderful restaurants in Toronto that I love to go to. So you've got, <laughs> there are certain things about Toronto I also love, so. So do I. My tofu is ready to go. Shrimps are peeled. What is next? So I'm just gonna add a little bit more oil to help all those ingredients yep. get going there. And we can just go ahead and start adding our ingredients. So we can put our shrimp in. What else am I putting in here? The rest of our prep veggies. So our peas, our red peppers, so our garlic, our shallots, and about half of our green onion. Love it, everything's going in, okay. And you can just give that a stir and make sure everything's cooking, cooking well. And that will take about four minutes or until our shrimp are pink and done. I can't handle how beautiful the scent is here. I've got this garlic. I'm. I'm taking in, and the color's so vibrant. We've got every color of the rainbow, including the shrimp. The shrimp is like this little pink, opaque color, but it's that garlic that, that I'm getting that's coming through, the sweetness of those peppers. Oh, okay. Um, you can always add a bit of salt and pepper as well. We can go ahead and do uh -huh. that now. Yeah. I'm, uh, I grew up in Newfoundland, or in Labrador. We love salt mm -hmm. on everything, so go ahead and add some salt. It only makes everything taste better. Oh, that is too funny. I tend to put less salt in mine. I'll test it at the end, once we do the soy, the soy sauce and all that. Perfect. Everything is starting to saute. While that's happening, we can go ahead and prep our eggs. We're gonna crack them into our bowl, give them a little whisk. So now I usually crack my egg onto the side on my cutting board and right into the bowl. I use the side of the bowl itself. I do know that's risky because you do tend to sometimes get little bits of eggshell in the bowl itself. Yeah. So the, the cutting board is a better option. Just grab a fork and give them a quick stir. Okay. And then I'm just gonna move everything over to one side of the pan. Then we can go ahead and, and we can just mix our eggs right in. Let them form a little bit. So give it maybe 30 seconds. I am doing just that. I'm gonna lower my heat just a little bit. Now you can smell a yep. little bit of that egg coming through as well. The next thing we're going to do is bring the noodles into our pan. Okay, I've got my noodles in my pan. Bring that heat up to medium, medium high. Give it a quick mix. Make sure all the ingredients are incorporated nicely. Next. Grab your sauce. Give it another little shake to make sure everything is mixed up nicely. All right, a little dance. <laughs> we have to do that. Pour this over the entire dish, ensuring that Sauce gets everywhere. Ooh, listen to that sizzle. And you can smell it as soon as that sauce hits the pan. Now, I'm just using my tongs to mix everything up, and then I'll switch to my wooden spoon. OK, we've got everything mixed. So now we can go ahead and add your bean sprouts. I was wondering when these went in. 
If you overcook your bean sprouts, they'll just become soggy and gross. Right. Give that a bit of a stir as well. And now I'm gonna take half of one lime and just so we can squeeze it right over, right over the entire thing. I did about a half and a quarter because I like mine a little citrusy. What I like to do as well is to serve each plate with a wedge of lime so people can add a little bit more if, if, they, if they like that flavor. So we've got a few more ingredients to finish the dish, but before we do that, we're gonna go to break and when we come back, we're gonna get to dish with Chef Stephen Barrett. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for more Dish with Mary. We now return to Dish with Mary. Welcome back. I have cleaned off my workspace, I've cleaned off my cooktop, and I am ready to dish with Chef Stephen. So Stephen, tell us, where did your passion for food come from? I think for food, it's a really important aspect of all of our lives. It's culturally based, it brings us together, it literally keeps us alive, it allows us to invite ourselves into someone else's culture and see the world from a different place. It's a great leveler, it's political, it's motivational, and I really like to eat this stuff. So the more I'm engaged and involved with food, the happier I generally am. Much like myself, culinary, the culinary arts was not your first career choice, was it? It was not, no. I did a um, Bachelor of Education and some international development. So my wife and I were in Australia for seven years, and while I was there, I was teaching and doing some other things, and I, I went to culinary school in Melbourne. Great city, excellent food, excellent culture, and a really great place for someone to learn about food and, and, and study in that field. It was wonderful. So I'm still kind of juggling all these things. I still teach. I still yeah. do some international development work. And food is my passion above and beyond all those things. So trying to trying to balance it all with a family life. Canada to Australia. Correct. Australia yep. back to Canada, but there were some stops in between. So I've been kind of all over. Uh, I spent some time in Thailand and Southeast Asia, so that's reminiscent of, of the street food in that country and the beautiful cuisine and people that are there. But yeah, I've done a lot of traveling. Uh, just got back from Tanzania not too long ago. I try to travel as much as I can. We lived in Toronto for a little while. We drove to Chicago overnight on a Friday after work just to try Uno's and the deep dish pizzas. So the more I can travel and the further I can go to expand my taste buds and, and try different cultures, that, that's what really drives me. Food and, and culture and travel are things that I see as really valuable, important, and, and can bring us together. So basically eating your way around the world. Yeah, as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> How many countries have you been to? 40 something. Which would be, and I'm gonna put you on the spot, your favorite? <laughs> Food country. Uh, food, it's really hard to say. Now, I know one. you're going to say you love them all say, equally, I, okay? I, I, but there no, has to be a standout. <laughs> I don't like them all equally, but I'll say a couple that I like. Mexican cuisine is full of flavor. It's a lot more advanced than your Tex-Mex that we typically see and think of as Mexican. There's freshness and chilies and heat and spices, which are all lovely. Italy with the fresh pasta and the grandmothers teaching people and passing on those traditions is wonderful. The Nonas. Yeah, the Nonas in Italy. Australia, Australia food scene is incredible. They don't rely big on the big box chains or the, you know, the fast food joints, but it's a lot more independent restaurants, but their climate allows them to do that a little bit more. The food in Southeast Asia is spice driven, it's fresh, it's local, it's fragrant and aromatic and, and the best food in those countries is often what you get on the street and it's really fun to do it that way as well. Now who would you say is your toughest food critic? That's a hard question to answer. I, I often criticize myself and I know if something isn't as good as it should be, especially even mm, after serving. Okay. Sometimes oh, that I know that wasn't where it was meant to be. Uh, I cook for my family. They're always really supportive but they'll tell me pretty quickly if things aren't up to their standards or if they don't like it. Uh, and, you know, we live in a social world. It's pretty quick if you put something out there, people will tell you quickly if they don't think it's up to snuff, so. Normally the first answer is, my kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're my toughest critic. Yeah, one of my kids is a great eater. Uh, our second kid is an okay eater, but our oldest will eat better than most adults. He eats everything except for Brussels sprouts and really hot, hot sauce. So today we're making pad thai. What is it about Thai cuisine that you love? Thai cuisine is really special for a couple of reasons to me. First of all, it's delicious. Most people will order when they go out to get Thai food. So it's nice. I really like taking food that people see as maybe a little bit intimidating, maybe a little bit beyond their comfort level. 
and working with that and showing people, you know, it's not that hard, we can do it together. So that's the first thing. It's a popular takeout dish, everybody loves it, and it's, and it's really tasty. Uh, in addition to that, Pad Thai and Thai food is a little bit close to my soul. Uh, we, we traveled throughout Thailand, it's a wild country, it's a beautiful country, the food is fresh and fragrant and really special. You can get it on the street and it's a communal type of dish. But in addition, when I lived in Australia, a couple times a month, we would all go out for Thai food. And we would, some of us had kids, some of us didn't. We'd show up at the Thai restaurant. It was BYOB, so you'd bring a bottle of wine or two. You'd sit for two, three hours amongst friends and order 10 or 15 or 20 dishes, depending on how many people were out. And it just brings me back to that place that was really special and, and, and a happy place in my life with good friends where we shared great food together. And, and Pad Thai is a great way to bring people together. So it's special to me because, because of all those reasons and, and it's really, really good. It definitely is. So flavorful. Yeah. Do you tend to notice that because you are a chef, do you become the person that's usually the go-to cook for every gathering, um, every event? If I'm doing an event or going away with friends, I will most often volunteer for that role because a couple of things, you can cook when you want when you're cooking and other people have to deal with it. And usually when you're done dinner, you can sit down and relax and they have to clean the kitchen. So I prefer to be in that role anyhow, so. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to cook over cleaning any yeah. day. Put us in the kitchen, we'll take care of it. They can take care of the rest. It's funny, because I can be in a whole room full of people, not as comfortable as I am when I am in the kitchen. It's a nice place yeah. to be. So we're both in our happy place. I am thrilled to be cooking with you today and I can't wait to taste what we're making. But we're going to take a break. When we return, we're going to put together our Pad Thai dish, so don't go anywhere. Dish with Mary will return. You're watching Dish with Mary. Welcome back. We're ready to put the finishing touches on our Pad Thai dish. Steven, what is next? All right, so now we're going to plate. We're almost eating. Everything has been cooked. It's been sauced. The next step is to get this into a plate, top with peanuts, fresh green onion, a bit of cilantro, and those Thai chilies, if you so dare. Okay, so you mentioned cilantro. I'm not a big fan, so you either love it or you hate it. I'm one of those that I, I taste something very different, something that I shouldn't when I eat cilantro. So I've got some Thai basil. Can I use that substitute? Absolutely, Thai basil works, flat leaf parsley works, or even leave it out. So there are lots of options there. I've got my bowl, I've got my fork, what's next? I kind of approach this as similar as I would with a, an, an Italian style pasta, so I like to use tongs. Now we're that talking. way you can get in and spin it around and scoop it up. You can grab any of those little loose bits that you want, maybe okay. extra shrimp or some extra peppers, but just go ahead, grab some noodles. You might as well make a nice healthy portion. We've been working hard for this. Oh, no argument from me. <laughs> Lots of noodles, make sure you get some of that crispy tofu, some shrimp. And again, if you don't like shrimp, you can add chicken to this dish or you can just go completely vegetarian as well. But try to make sure that you have a little bit of each of the ingredients in your Pad Thai bowl. Okay, I've got mine in my bowl. Let's top our Pad Thai. Let's do it. So we have some fresh green onions that haven't been cooked. Okay, so I'm using my fresh green onion. We have some cilantro or Thai basil in your case. Sprinkle some of that over. Choose your own adventure, right? Yeah. You can pick as much or as little of all of these ingredients as you want. So I put some peanuts. Oh, and I noticed we've chopped the peanuts. Yeah, so they're nice, they're different sizes, different textures, different mouthfeels. So get those in there. Some Thai chilies. Okay, I'm gonna actually put a little bit of the Thai chili because I like a little heat. The seeds are where the heat lives. So remember that and then I just serve mine with one of the lime wedges. So you can put that in. Okay, I've got my lime fork. Please tell me we can taste it now. I sure <laughs> hope so. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go right in. Mmm, this is so good, so tasty. Now I love crunch in food, I really do. I love the crunch. I love that sweetness that we're getting from that sauce. You know, like that little hint of like maple syrup in there. It's not prominent, but it adds that little bit of depth to it. Okay, let's try this tofu. Mm. It's still got that firmness to it, which I love. I think it turned out pretty well. 
kind of went a little bit heavy on those chilies, so I definitely have some of that heat. <laughs> but the sweetness and the saltiness from the soy sauce is really satisfying. That egg gives it a sense of richness and a bit of luxury in the mouth. I enjoy eating pad thai as a meal, but what would you pair with this dish? Are you talking food or drink for pairings? Oh, let's go both. Yeah, so if you're gonna do food, it's like I said, it's a great banquet style meal. Go out to a Thai restaurant or even at home, you can do some rice, you could do some uh, larb, you could do a, a, a spicy mango salad, uh, pat siu, any of the other classic Thai dishes, or even a, a bit of a soup, maybe a hot and sour soup to start. Mm. Goes really well as far as drinks. Uh, with the spice, if you're looking at wine, you want something to cut that spice. So a, a, a Riesling would work really well. If you're looking at beer, I would go something crisp, local, a lager, or something really bright and fresh just to open up the palate or allow you to eat more. Those were all wonderful suggestions. Thank you so much for cooking with me today. And hopefully someday soon, we can go on another international cooking adventure. I sure hope so. I had so much fun. Thanks. For today's full recipe, visit our website at ami.ca slash dish dash recipes. Host, Mary Mamaliti. Executive producer, Michelle Dudas. Series producer, Anna Padraberic. Associate producer and editor, Miriam Bakhtiar. Director of Photography, Toronto, Brian Roy. Director of Photography, Halifax, Charlie Benoit. Camera Assistant, Toronto, Gavin Lee. Sound Recordist, Toronto, Mike Monson. Sound Recordist, Halifax, Scott Ferguson. Food Stylist, Joyce Singh. Media Accessibility Specialist, Simone Cupid. Audio Post, Mike Monson. Graphics, Mike Smith. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2022, Accessible Media, Inc.